Now let us spend a little bit of time to talk about the general term. Now that you have learned your binomial theorem, you may think that okay, now given me any binomial expansion, I can expand it no problem. Right. So what if a question like this pops up? Find the 20th term in the expansion of 1 plus x to the power 40. Okay, now think about it. The question did not ask you to expand the entire binomial expansion. The question specifically asked you to find the 20th term. And that's it. So, if you are going to just use a binomial uh, the binomial theorem that you've just learned to expand the entire expansion, and then you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the 20th term to get the 20th term, that sounds a little silly, isn't it? I mean, it not only it sounds tedious, but I think, well, there must be a better way out. The good news is, well, there is a better way out. Okay, so we have to rely back, of course, to our binomial theorem. Okay, so this is our typical binomial theorem. All right, so this is the 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 formula that we have been uh, talking about. Now, looking at the binomial theorem, okay, and we ha we can actually spot some patterns. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, now this is the first term. We call it T one term one. This is the second term, term 2, this is the third term, it's term 3, and this is the fourth term, term 4, okay, T4, and of course, the last term is actually our n plus 1 term, okay, because um, this is power n, so when fully expanded, there should be n plus 1 term, and therefore the last one should be the n plus 1 term. Okay, now, when you put in the term numbers, the position numbers, you will then realize that at term 2, you have nc1. Term 3, you have nc2. 4, we have nc3. Okay? So, when we are looking for the 20th term, that means we're looking for t20. And therefore, we know that, you know, it will be nc19. Okay? So, of course, what is the n? Well, n is the power, isn't it? So, in this case, we do know that the power is 40. So, this 20th term will be 40C19. Okay? Now, what next? Well, you also realize that, hey, you know, when this is NC1, B's power is also 1. When this is NC2, B's power is 2. NC3, well, B's power is 3. Okay, so as you can see, the pattern is rather obvious and rather easy to spot. So in our case here, we have 40C19, and 1 is our first term, x is our second term, so we know that, well, there must be a 1, and there must be an x. So x will take up the power of 19, 1, 9. Okay, now, what next, of course? What is the power of 1, isn't it? So what is the power of A? So as we take a look further, we analyze the pattern further, we start to realize that, you know, when B's power is 1, A's power is N minus 1. And when B's power is 2, A's power is N minus 2. And so on. And therefore, in our case here, we will know that 1 will be 1 to the power of 40, minus 19 okay so in this case we've gotten our 20th term without the need to expand the entire expansion okay so what goes on now is of course to simplify okay now 40c19 is a very big number so I'm just going to uh, leave it as it is now okay um, 1 to the power of anything is always 1, so this is as good as not being there at all. So um, what we have next is x to the power of 19. Okay, this. So in general, this is the general term, the general formula. Okay, for every term inside of any binomial expansion. So in a binomial expansion like a plus b raised to the power of n, the tr plus 1, which simply means is the r plus 1 term okay all right will be given by this formula ncr a to the power of n minus r multiplied by b to the power of r 
Okay, so in our case here, we're interested in the 20th term, and therefore it will be NC19. Say the question wants us to find the 15th term now. Okay, for example, the 15th the 15th term. Alright, we're interested in the 15th term in the same expansion. So how do we find that? Well, we know that, hey, you know, we're looking for a 15th term. That means to say it will be 40C14. Okay? And of course, a 1 will be to the power of 40 minus 14. And of course, uh, X will be to the power of 14. Okay, so of course this is a 1 and of course all we need to do next is just to work out the f uh, the numbers and yada yada. Okay, we solve. Alright, that's the term. Alright, so this general term formula helps us to find, to zero in, to find any term that we like, any term that we need. Okay? Now, let us take a look at this example. Find a coefficient of x cubed in the expansion of x squared plus 1 over 2x raised to the power of 9. So this question here is slightly different from the previous one that we saw in the sense that we don't know which position number this term is in right? we have no idea where this term is is this the fifth term is this the seventh term we have no idea so how are we going to find this term okay so of course we're going to make use of the general formula the same thing that we just talked about to help us zero in to find this term Okay, without the need to expand everything. Okay, so what do we do? We're very simple. So first thing we do, we let the term, okay, we let the term that we're interested in be the general term. Okay, so we let the term be 9CR x squared 1 over 2x raised to the power of r. Okay? So we're just following the formula, n, we know that n is 9, so therefore 9, cr, r, we have no idea which position is in, so we don't know what's the r value. So the first term is our x squared, second term is our 1 over 2x, okay? So 1 over 2x will have power of r, and the x squared should have power of 9 minus r. Okay, so this is the term that we're interested in, but we can't find this term because we have no idea what's r, right? But what do we know? There's only one thing we know about this term, and that is that this term has a power of 3 for x. Okay, so what we do next is we filter out every other constant. We only concern ourselves with the x. So in this case, we will have x squared to the power of 9 minus r, multiply by, so in this case we have x to the power of negative 1 because it's 1 over x to the power of r is equal to x to the power of 3 okay now what you notice here is that I totally ignore all the constant terms that I have 9cr is a constant term but because I don't know why it's r so 9cr is useless okay I mean I don't need to bother with 9cr for now likewise 1 over 2 which is half half to the power of r again I don't know why it's r and therefore, one to the power half to, to the power of r doesn't help me in any sense. So I'm just going to filter them out for now. So what's going to help me now is the power of x. So from here, according to the law of indices, right, you would have x to the power of 18 minus 2r minus r is equal to x to the power of 3. And therefore, by comparing the powers, we will have 3r. Okay, 3r is equal to 15 and therefore we know that r is equal to 5 okay now r equals to 5 this is not our final answer because this is all this tells us is that when r is equal to 5 we will get the x as power 3 okay so what we need to do next is of course to substitute in okay r is equal to 5 into our term right remember that this is the term that we're interested in so now we know that r is 5 so we have 9c5 x square okay raised to the power of 9 minus 5 and that will be a 4 okay so we have 1 over 2 x raised to the power of 5 okay so when you work this out working this out with the help of a calculator we will be able to get the answer of 63 over 16 x cubed so this is not the final answer I mean this is the term right with x cubed, the x cubed term, but to answer the question 
Okay, they only ask us for the coefficient, so the answer should be 63 over 16. So this is the coefficient of the x cubed term. So now, if you know how to find the term with power of uh, x to the power of 3, I'm sure you can now do the same to find the term with x to the power of 4, or for the matter, x to the power of 5, and so on and so forth, right? So let's say we're interested in the term with x to the power of 0. Okay, so let's say now the question asks us to find the term with um, x to the power of 0. How are we going to do that? Well, very simple. Basically, everything, every step here, we're going to do the same. The only difference is now this term here, all right, the right-hand side here, instead of 3, we're going to have 0. Okay, so what it means is that, well, we're going to have the same thing. We just simply copy everything. Okay, all the steps are going to be exactly the same, all right, except here, to the power of 0. So from here, we'll be able to work out that, you know, 3R is equal to 18. And therefore, R is equal to 6. Okay, now what this tells us is that when r is equal to 6 and you put into this general term, we will get a term with x to the power of 0, which means that, x anyway, x to the power of 0, you should know what it is, uh, x to the power of 0 is 1, alright? So what it means is that to be x to the power of 0 means it's a constant term, it's got no x at all. Okay, so it's a constant term, or sometimes we call it the term independent of x. Okay, there's no x at all. So now what we have learned so far using the general term is that we can use the general term, this formula here, to find a specific term we want in an expansion. Okay, whether or not we are given the position number, if we are given the position number, let's say the 20th term, okay, we can find the 20th term directly. Okay, or instead, you know, sometimes like this example here, we are asked to find a term with x to the power of 3, or the term with x to the power of 0, and so on and so forth. We can also use of this general term formula to help us find.